God, he does not need to see who you are. He made you. You're going to God because something ain't working and something ain't right. And I need help. Can you fix it? I'm tripping on you. You ain't happy, but you still running that same unhappy play. I've been there. Oh, my daddy wasn't in my life. God, like, how long you gonna run that play? You're a grown man. And if you wanna stay in that, that world, stay in it. I'm not even judging you. I've been there. I just pray one day you get out of it. It's hard to get out. Hallelujah. Amen. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Listen very carefully. I, I've been so locked in since I am a 360-man conference. I've been so locked in, like life-changing, like being in an environment of so many men who are locked in, like all the messages I've been getting, the text messages I've been getting, like the DMs I've been getting, like, man, this, this reaching out and wanting to talk and wanting to build and, and just, I, I've been so locked in, like this ready, like to go to the next level. It's like so inspired, amen. Like, like when I left the, the man's conference the following day, I went to MSU and spoke to 500, 600 uh, high school students at MSU and, 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 and just, just poured my heart out and, and kids were coming up to me like crying, like depressed, like going through it. Like I got kicked out of my house. Like my, 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 my mom don't love me. Like this, just you name it. And I'm like, ooh, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. I've been so locked in. Listen to me very carefully. God said, that his plans are to prosper you. That's his plans for you. Like I, I, like, I don't care what you've done. I don't care what you've been through. Like, God's plan is to prosper you. God's plan is to take you to the next level. Like, listen very carefully. I, I, I don't care what your plans are. I, I, I don't care what, what you've been through. I, I don't care how much heartache it's been. I, I don't care who doubts you. I don't care who, who says you're not smart enough. I don't care who says you're not talented enough. I, I don't care who doesn't like you. Listen to me very carefully. I don't even care who doesn't believe in you. I'm telling you that the most important person, your creator said, my plans are to prosper you. So I need you to get in line with daddy's plans. Because daddy's plans are to prosper you. Daddy's plans are to take you to the next level. That's his plan. But in order for daddy to do what no eye has seen, what no ears heard, what has not entered into the heart of man, daddy needs you to produce. Daddy needs you to produce. God wants you to produce so that as you produce, he will prosper you more and more and more and he will blow your mind more every single day. I need you to produce. I need you to be so locked in on Jeremiah 29 11, for I know the plans I have for you. Forget your plans. I want you to be so locked in on what the plans that God has for you. Like, you know what? When we wake up in the morning, God wants to prosper me. God does not want to harm me. 
God wants to give me hope and a future. Like when you wake up every morning, before your feet hit the floor, I want you to repeat that to yourself. Like daddy's plans are to prosper me. And because of that, I'm going to produce today. So what does that mean, pastor? I'm glad you asked. Let's define production. Because I think sometimes, like we get caught up and, and we don't really know what we're talking about. So let's be clear, right, on what production is. Production is to compose, create, or bring out by intellectual or physical effort. That's what production is, right? In, in, in the English dictionary, that's what it means to produce, to compose something, to create something, right? Or to bring out by intellectual or physical effort, right? Just so be very careful. That's what it means to produce. But when we talk about godly production, we talk about divine production. That's a whole other level. So when you talk about divinely producing, it's more than composing. It's more than creating. It's more than bringing out by intellectual or physical effort. We talk about divine production. Now we're talking about being fruitful. Yep, yep, yep. When we talk about divine production, that means now you're fruitful, right? And fruitful is defined as Yielding or producing fruit. <laughs> Yielding or producing fruit. So I don't want you to just compose something. Now you can produce something, but if you're not producing something that is according to your purpose, then you're not being fruitful. Hear what I just said. Don't speed past that. Slow down. Hear what I just said. You, anybody can produce something. But if you're not producing according to your purpose, if you're not producing according to what God created you to produce, you're not being fruitful. Listen very carefully. You were created to be a producer. You were created to be a producer. God put a seed inside of you. God put a gift inside of you. God needs you to be fruitful with that gift. God needs you to be fruitful, listen to me very carefully, with the gift that he put inside of you. That seed, he wants you to bear fruit. Don't just produce what you want to produce. Like, like, like I can go out and I can go play, right, uh, uh, minor league football. I can go try out for the arena team right now. As a matter of fact, no disrespect, I think that maybe, just maybe, Jamie, I can go try out for the Lions and I can get on the kickoff team. I, I might be able to get a, I might be able to get on the kickoff team. I know I got like three snaps in me, Jamie. I, I know I can run down the field. Shh, boom! I can still listen very carefully. I can still go hit somebody. I, you you don't lose that, right? There's something right here that's not wrapped tight. I can still go run into a 280 pound man full speed and throw my body at him and fall down. I don't need a physical trait for that. There's something up here that I just, I just got. Like, I just like running into stuff. I can still go do that. So I can still go produce, Jamie, for the Lions kickoff team. But that don't mean I'm being fruitful. That don't mean I'm producing according to my purpose. This is my purpose. This is what I've been called to do. So I can go produce that or I can go be fruitful. You were created to be a producer. I need you to write that down. I need, I need, to, be careful. I need you to type it in, into, into the comments right now. You were created to be a producer. Every morning you get up, say it, write it over and over again. I don't want there to be a day where you're not producing. I don't want there to be a day where you're not being fruitful. Genesis 1, 27. Let me, let, let me break it down for you. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them male and female he created them. So God reproduced himself. Aha, uh -huh, did you catch that? He, he, he created you and I in his image. So what he did was he reproduced himself. So what I'm telling you is that God put a gift on the inside of you. God put a seed on the inside of you. He doesn't want you to just, to just produce whatever you feel like producing. He wants you to reproduce Right, what he put on the inside of you. You see, very carefully, you are the fruit. The seed of the fruit is inside the fruit. So the seed that's inside of you, God needs you to reproduce that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Genesis 1, amen. Genesis 1, 28. 
New Living Translation. Hallelujah. Then God blessed them and said, come on, type a little louder. I can't hear (laughs) y'all. Type a, come on, come on. Type a little louder. I can't hear y'all. God blessed them and said, what? It it, it, it didn't say, go produce something. Whatever you feel like doing, Jamie, go produce that. Whatever you feel like doing, uh, uh, Trina, go, go, go produce that. Nick, whatever you feel like doing, uh, go, go produce that. Oh, come on, somebody. Come on, come on, Tangy. Whatever you feel like doing, just, just go ahead and go produce that. Go, Charmel, just whatever you feel like. Adam, just go, go ahead and go, go, go produce that. Go, 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 go ahead and, Darla, go, go ahead and go produce that. Nick, Nick, Nicky Flute, go, go ahead, just go produce that. No, he said, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. <laughs> Woo! God said, be fruitful and multiply, which means the seed that he put on the inside of you, he needs you to bear fruit. Let me slow down, right? Let's be very careful. Go back for a second, Jamie, if you don't mind. Bring the scripture up. I want y'all to screenshot this. All right, screenshot it. Right? I want you to, I want, I want you to screenshot it. I want you to write it down. Mark it in your Bible. After God created man, it says, then God blessed them. <laughs> yep. That, can I, can I, before, before I give you the quiz, I want to give you, you know how, the, te- the teacher you like, that you really like, the te- your favorite teacher, like they, they give you a hint, like they, like pay attention, <laughs> pay attention, then God bless them. Everybody hear that? And said, right? So, so before you get to and, I want you to see the first part, then God bless them. And said, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and govern it. Principle number one, you are blessed where you are. Oh, come on, come on. Uh, But pastor, I need to have this and I need to have that and I need to get to here and I need to get to here. Amen, I do too. But guess what? I'm blessed right where I am. Yeah, I, I don't care what you're going through. I don't care. Listen, I don't care how difficult it is. Listen, I, I empathize for you. Listen very carefully. Right? I, I've been through my go-through too. But I'm telling you right now, in the midst of divorce, right? In, 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 in the midst of uh, addiction, in the midst of whatever you're going through, I'm telling you that despite how difficult it is right now, you're blessed right where you are. You're blessed. Right where you are, if, 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 if I didn't learn it in the seminary, if I didn't learn it going through trials and tribulations, if, if I didn't learn it as an adult, I learned it from my, from my sister who passed away. Yep, yep, Vanita. Yep, yep, v- v- I, I learned it from v- v- Vanita. See, right here, my, my wife's sister, right? A quasi paralyzed, right? She always was smiling. She always was laughing. She always, she always had a, a good spirit. She was never, woe is me, Jamie. She was never complaining. Every time I came over to see my girlfriend, listen, every time I saw her, she was always in a good mood. She was always blessing other people. She was blessed right where she was. Stop complaining. Stop focusing on the wrong things. Focus on God. I need you to be locked in. Did you forget? You got to be locked in. You are, it said it in the word. Then God blessed them. So what that means is, stay with me, Jamie. God created you. God blessed you. (laughs) Period. (laughs) I, I didn't put a comma. I didn't put a, help me out, Uncle Chuck. I didn't put a dot, dot, dot. I didn't put a semicolon. God bless you. I'm sorry, God created you, and then God bless you. You bless right where you are. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So now that you know that you are blessed right where you are, now that you understand principle number two, hear me, hear me clearly, right? Like, uh, listen very carefully. You, right, have to understand the purpose, right? Like, when, when you produce, Amen. That means that you are producing according, amen, you, you are producing according to your purpose. That's what it means to be fruitful. You, you have to produce 
according to your purpose. Not according to what you want to do. That's what it means to be fruitful. So I need you to look at your life and ask yourself, is what I'm doing over here in this area of my life pleasing to God? Is what I'm doing in my marriage, with my children, in my company, in my church, at my job, in college as a student, in high school, is, is what I'm doing in these areas, right? Is what I'm producing, is that fruitful? Is it according to my purpose? Because if it's not according to your purpose, it might be productive, but it's not fruitful. And if it's not fruitful, God's not happy with it. It's in very careful. And the last part, if you caught it, if you caught it, producers, right, right, divine producers, which means you're fruitful, they govern their environment, which means they're the thermostat and not the thermometer, which means that I'm walking to an environment, I set the temperature. I'm not going to allow your negative energy to make me negative. No, 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 no. My positive energy will make you positive. And if you can't receive it, then one of us got to go. But I'm not going to let you bring me down. Producers govern their environment. The word said, then God blessed them and said, be fruitful, multiply, subdue, and what? And govern. If you are a producer and you are fruitful, you are governing your environment. Oh, come on, somebody. And so if God gave me the gift of encouragement, Jamie, if God gave me the gift of, of being passionate, Jamie, if God gave me the gift of inspiring people, when I walk into an environment, Jamie, as a producer, as a fruitful if, uh, individual, Jamie, it is my job, it is my responsibility to govern that environment. So when I leave that environment, I leave it better than it was before I came because I'm a producer. Pastor, what, what, what does govern mean? Pastor, like, like I don't understand. Pa I got you. I got you. Amen. I got, I, I, my high seas, I got you to control, to direct, or strongly influence the actions and conduct of. Oh, don't tell me you're a producer. Don't tell me you're don't don't tell me you're being fruitful if, if, if you can't strongly influence the actions and conduct of <laughs> woo, woo. Uh, I, I I had to get to a point when I recognized that as a father, if I had to yell and scream and fight my kids to get them to do something, I'm gonna leave that right there. I'm gonna leave that right there. If, 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 if anybody need that, you go ahead and pick it up. I'm going to leave it right there. For anybody that need that, if you need it, go ahead and pick it up. Govern means to exert a determining or guiding influence in or over. My oldest son, 19. He 19. You, 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 know, you know what I'm talking about, Jamie? We got grown kids. They're going to do what they want to do. But when, I'm a, when you're a producer, when, you, when you're fruitful, you can exert a determining or a guide influence over them. And even, even, even when you, they don't have to do it, they want to do it because you're fruitful. They want to do it because you are a producer. I saw, I saw so many men at the Iowa 360 Man Conference with their children, and, and their children wanted to be there. Uh, come on, Mustafa said on, on, on a call a while back that he was talking to uh, Willie Mo Jr.'s son, and, and he said something, and Willie Mo Jr.'s son said, ooh, that's a sermon. <laughs> he didn't want to talk about no video game. He wasn't talking about no basketball. I don't know how old my man is. My man is not even, I don't think he's even 13 yet. He said, that's a sermon. He had the frame of mind to hear, something, hear, hear a word and say, that's a, that, that would be a good sermon. Govern. Are you governing your environment? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, here we go. Your anointing comes from producing in your appointment. Your anointing 
comes from producing in your appointment. I, I listen very carefully. I used to say I lost football. But as I spiritually matured, I realized I didn't lose football. I gained my purpose. I, I listen very carefully. Because when I say I, I lost something, my focus is on losing and not on gaining. So I changed my focus from losing to gaining, and I said, don't focus on what you lost, focus on what you gained. So I didn't lose football, I gained my appointment. And as I gained my appointment, I recognized and I realized my anointing. I was, I, I listen very carefully, I am anointed to be doing what I'm doing right now. I am anointed to, to preach the word of God. Amen. I, I am anointed, amen, to teach athletes how to win in sports and in life. I am anointed in that area. I, I, listen, I produced in football. Make no mistake about it. I produced. I played D1 ball. Arena ball, Canadian ball, I produce. But right here, whoo, I'm in my anointing. I'm in my anointing. And Jamie, it feels so good. It feels so good to be in my anointing. It feels so, it feels so. I, I had somebody call me the other day who, who didn't know I retired from MDLC. Jamie, they said, oh, my bad, you on, you on your way to work? I said, my way to work? What you talking about, bro? I, I said, I, I. I, I don't work. He said, you don't have a job? I said, no, I don't have a job. What do you, got? What do you have? I have an anointing. I, and when you have an anointing, I'm always on my way to my anointing. I'm all in my car. I'm in my anointing. Right? Hey, 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 Bigby, I'm in my anointing. I, I, I don't have a weekend. I don't have off days. I'm always in my anointing. I'm always in my purpose. I'm always working. <laughs> It's not what I do, it's who I am. Yeah. Jeremiah 1 5. Jeremiah 1 5. Come on, let me get y'all ready to get out of here. Jeremiah 1 5. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart. Can I ask why so many of you are trying to blend in and trying to be what other people want you to be when God never intended you to be what they want you to be? Like, can you answer me that question? Like, like, why are you trying to be what the world wants you to be? Why are you trying to be like her, trying to be like him? When God said it in Jeremiah 1, 5, God said, I set you apart. I set you apart. I never wanted you to be like them. I never wanted you to blend in. You were born to be set apart. And not only did I set you apart, I appointed you. As a prophet to many nations, I'm here to tell you, before God formed you in your mother's womb, God knew you, and God set you apart, and God gave you an appointment. And once you get to your appointment, oh, come on, somebody. Well, I, I, I grew up in a military-type household, Jamie. My, my, my dad was never on late. My dad said, listen, very careful. If you ain't five minutes early, you late. So my dad said, we'll never be late to an appointment. I tell you right now, Jamie, I was late to this appointment, but I'm here now. I'll never be late again. I, I'm always on my post. I'm always on my post. I'm a governor. I'm a, I, I govern my environment. I, I'm on time to my appointment. Why? Because my anointing. Yeah, 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 hallelujah, 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 amen, amen. Listen, listen very carefully. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I need you to understand that just producing something is not enough. I need you to understand that God is calling you to be fruitful to multiply, subdue, and to govern. If there's any env environment in your life right now where you recognize you're not being fruitful, it's time to pray. If there's any environment right now in your life that you're not governing, that you're not significantly influencing, I need you to pray. If there's any environment 
that you're not locked in to the degree where the fruit is evident, I need you to pray. I need you to pray. Because that means you're not in your anointing. And if you want to be promoted to the level that God ordained you to be promoted to, you got to be in your appointment. Before I formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. I set you apart. I appointed you. I tell you right now, I still have trials. I still have tribulations. I still go through my go-through. But I'm living the best life I've ever lived right now. In my anointing. I know what I'm appointed to do. And so I produce. I bear fruit. In every area of my life where I'm not bearing fruit, I'm looking at it. And I'm working on it. Father God of heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for life, heaven, for strength. We thank you for the opportunity to be alive, Father. Bless those who are praying with me right now, who are asking they begin to be fruitful in their lives the way you've called them to be, Father. Forgive us for our sins and our shortcomings, Father. Help us to realize, Father, and to live in the fact that you set us apart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Thanks for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you Saturday at 11 for Sabbath service. For all of our announcements, upcoming events, and special programming, please visit our social media pages on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. Your tangible support of this ministry makes all the difference in the world, and we can't thank you enough for your commitment. If you'd like to support this ministry, please use our cash app at dollar sign APOC Global. If you would prefer a more traditional approach, please visit our website at www.apocministry.org. On behalf of pastors Thomas and Tyus, their wives and families, and the whole of your A Place of Change ministry family, until we meet again, be blessed. When you go to God, he does not need to see you.